This is Ian. He's now two years old, and he likes driving tractors, watching cartoons, coloring, playing with his friends, and throwing sticks for his dog. His life is pretty simple, but his world is very complex. And that is why he needs your help. Ian will be growing up in the most technologically advanced, globalized world since the beginning of time. And one day, he will see headlines of things that happened when he was young and wonder why they happened. He will also learn startling things about other young people and he won't be able to ignore the injustices and stereotypes that affect our youth locally, nationally, and globally. He will see that at one time, 1,439 teens attempted suicide each day. He will notice that way too much attention is being paid to the challenges young people face, like drug abuse, self-harm, bullying, assault, and incarceration. He will probably wonder, like many young people, how he can survive in such a world. He might even try to figure out what he could do to change that world in order to make it a better place. Hopefully, Ian and his friends will realize that they will be able to find whatever they look for and know that they are making the world a better place just by being in it. Since that's much easier said than done, we asked some young people what they would say to someone who is struggling or having a difficult time. I would say don't be afraid to do whatever you want to do. There are so many possibilities and too many times kids get discouraged and they put this invisible like ceiling over themselves and don't reach for their dreams. But in America and in the world there are so many opportunities and you just have to follow them and hope that what you do works out for the best. People don't realize how loved they are and how much they matter and like you may think that nobody cares about you. But you, like you yourself, could be the reason why somebody wakes up in the morning and the reason why somebody smiles. And it, it's such a great feeling to be the reason why someone smiles. And like, if you're ever feeling down, just tell yourself, smile today and cry tomorrow and tell that to yourself every day. Find your passion. Um, we spend a lot of time in our lives being told that you know we're not as great as we think we are, being put down, not accepted. Um, but if you just find your passion, it creates a beauty in you that you might not even notice yourself. Um, and you just need to find what kind of lights your spark, your inner fire. Within every generation, there are a few to lead the aviation, and they can be you. So keep on living with a purpose and always stay true. The world is a fascinating place, explore it like a zoo. Be one of the movers and shakers, and always do what you have to. It's never too early in the day for you to be you. So change the world as if it's all you can do. Beat the odds, do the unthinkable, or just be you. These simple yet profound answers lead up to one blatant truth. Today's teens and young adults are more compassionate and wise than people realize. If we want to help Ian, his friends, and everyone else, we need Plan B. Plan B is the solution that already exists with the thousands of young people and adults all over the planet who are already embracing their talents, their unique identity, and their passions by being themselves. From young Nobel Prize contenders to empathetic team leaders and our youngest and most inspirational president, there are some really amazing beacons of light, both nationally and globally, that can give young people hope and a sense of what's possible. We are human beings, and this is the part of our, of our human nature, that we don't learn the importance of anything until it's snatched from our hands. And when, in Pakistan, when we were stopped from going to school, at that time, I realized that education is very important, and education is the power for women. And that's why the terrorists are afraid of education. They do not want women to get education because then women would become more powerful. In order to succeed, you have to look at everything with your own unique perspective. Okay? What does that mean? That means that when you think, you must think in your own creative way, not accepting everything that's already out there. 
I had a speech impediment. So basically, if I was trying to say the word cat, I'd say the word tat. You know, if I said the word dog, I'd say dod. If I said the word god, I'd say dod as well. Um, I can say my my X's, my S's, C's, Q's, T's, K's, um, <coughs> all of them. You can say it. It is like blabbered out of my mouth a little bit. I'm not asking for perfection for myself. I'm asking for greatness. In the fear-ridden society that we live in today, the lack of empathy is the root of all evil. My Name, My Story has a simple plan to inspire empathy in the community. Through our school clubs and leaders, our stories of inspiration, our tangible impact in the community, and through our live events. What started off as my dream has become a movement in the community, led by the future generations. Because when youth talk to youth, empathy means seeing they things listen. not only from perspective of yourself, but seeing it from the person sitting next to you. Understanding how other people feel and their emotions. I feel really good. My heart's warm because I'm helping other people. Peer pressure is only placed upon you if you do not know who you are. It's such a great opportunity uh, to be able to help others. Who am I? I'm a champion. Who am I? I'm a champion. I hope that you hear more of us, that we grow, and the movement to change things and make some sort of inspiration in the world has started, that I think that we can truly, like our motto says on my t-shirt, hope, believe, succeed, and inspire. As long as you can change one life in a positive way, you have truly made a difference. Awesome. Let's get out there! I don't know everything, I'm just a kid. But I do know this. It's everybody's duty to give the world a reason to dance. So get to it! Some of these amazing individuals can be found in the halls at Pleasant Valley High School, where we ask students what makes this generation awesome. Well, our generation is in a pivotal point in the United States' history. We have the, the economic recession, some say the depression. We've had um, the 9-11 and the war on terror. And every generation has its flaws. And our generation, I think, is in a point, a key point, to where it can create itself even better than what it is. Our generation is great. We, generation Z is not generation lazy. It's generation zany. We want to do things. We want to finish things. We want to create things. Our generation has done things that our parents wish they could have done in their generation. Medical advancements, technological advancements. And with, with all these advancements, we're just showing our capabilities as human beings and individuals in our generation. My generation is awesome because we definitely are making a lot of improvements in the world today. We can do it if people just stand back and let us do what we need to do. Because um, we do spend a lot of time being told, no, you can't do that. You're too young, you don't understand yet, you're not educated enough yet. But some of the greatest innovators in our world were not educated uh, as far as what we consider to be best education. Um, so my generation definitely can make an impact and we are making an impact every day. It's just whether or not it's being recognized that is the biggest problem. One thing that's awesome about our generation is that we have like a really good moral code that other generations haven't seemed to have very much. And from my own experience, people are very accepting. There's no judgment. Um, I think our generation is awesome because we know how to adapt. Like our parents still live in the 20th century, so we have to live in their world, but we also have to live in the 21st century. And sometimes it's hard to live double life like that. But we have to learn how to adapt, and that kind of makes us awesome. What makes our generation more awesome, I think, is technology. Uh, because of the advancements of technology, we've been able to share our positive attitude, making Twitter pages, Facebook pages, sending out emails and all this. You know, you can work with kid president even in your classroom, uh, share videos with kids from elementary school. You know, you, you can be on TV and all this. You know, our generation is very social and, you know, with social media and internet and all that, it's been, I think that's what sets our generation apart, just technology. The generation of fighters and we are extremely accepting of basically everything. We're very tolerant. Because it's our generation, we all, we all understand 
understand each other. I think one of the greatest things about our generation is how accepting we are. Because a lot, like if you think about the old generations, they just, they put, a, put us down almost and they make us feel, I don't know, more inferior. But if you look around our halls, we have people who are just okay with being who they are, and we don't discriminate against them at all. I think that's one of the things that makes us pretty awesome. So Generation Awesome is that we're willing to accept people for being different. I think our generation is awesome because no matter how much other generations, like our older ones, seem to inflect their ideas on us and how much they try to say that we're a lazy generation, we always seem to do what we need to do and we get everything. I think that our generation is creative and we're not, we don't box ourselves in with our different ideas. Um, we tend to look at things a lot differently because we learn from our parents how things were in their generation, what was better then, what's better now. And I think most of all, I think our generation has a lot of confidence and it helps build us up to be more than we expect to be, but they end up being super successful. Our generation is awesome because we have so much at our fingertips, like technology and all these amazing resources, and we take advantage of them so I feel that our generation is not afraid to speak their mind, and that's very good. I think our generation has been more united than any other generation. We went through 9-11, that was a great pivotal point, and it was a tragic event, but it brought us together as a generation. That was our generation. This economic recession is really showing us what we should compromise and not compromise. It's bringing us together as families, as communities, and as a nation all together. It really is. Those people don't see the whole picture. They just see a fragment of it. They're, it's a whole picture and they just see one part of it. It's like a puzzle. The pu it's pieces and they just see one piece. They take off one piece. As a person in this generation, whether you're from Generation X or the Baby Boomers or Generation Alpha, like your son, you you want to look at our generation and pick out the good points. You always want to be an optimist about things. And with being an optimist, you want to see the good value that our generation brings. And like I would like uh, medical advancements and technological advancements, those are good aspects of our generation. By looking at what we've done, you can see our generation is a good generation. By looking and seeing and valuing and observing, observing, doing all this stuff and not just looking at information that experts and mainstream media and Facebook and social media that is a rise in our generation that puts out, you're just seeing an abstract image of it. You're just seeing numbers and letters by actually observing and looking at our generation. Will you not only see the impact that we have on earlier generations and future generations, but you'll see all the good stuff we've done throughout our generation and moving on. We also asked a few other local teens and college students to define this generation, and this is what they had to say. My age group uh, doing wonderful things. I had the opportunity to go out to Penn State um, in late February to attend THON, which a lot of people are familiar with. It's quite popular, especially in Pennsylvania and Penn State. Um, it raises money for pediatric cancer. Um, and these kids at Penn State stand for 46 hours. They, they, they nominate dancers and they stand for 46 hours straight, no sleep, um, in honor of these children who fight cancer and to raise money uh, for the cause. Um, so I got the opportunity to go out with Katie Forte and, and experience this event. And, and what I learned was um, a lot of people, you know, Penn State is this huge, huge, huge school. Um, and it, there's a lot of partying associated with it. If you look up like the top party schools, I'm sure Penn State's like in the top 20 or in the top 10. Um, but on those two nights, I stood with people. I had no, I had no idea who they were, and I stood next to them um, for a cause. And for the last four hours of the event, um, it gets emotional. They have people come out and tell their stories, um, like families and stuff about their children and the and the battle that they're going through. There's a video montage of people who just got diagnosed this year. A video montage of people who we've lost in the recent year. Um, and so while this whole thing is going on, I'm kind of reflecting on my own life and kind of, you know, where I'm at and my journey with cancer. Um, and so this video montage comes on of people who have passed away and everybody in the stadium, there's 16,000 people, um, everybody in the stadium immediately locks shoulders with each other. 
So I'm standing in the middle of two people who I have just met a day ago. Um, and I have my arms around their shoulders and we start swaying back and forth as we watch this video montage. Everybody's crying. Um, and the reason that I was crying was not because, you know, we were seeing these children who had tragically had their lives stolen from them due to cancer. And while, and that is incredibly terrible. But the reason I was crying was because you look across the sea of color and, and people and bodies and just humanity. Um, and you see everybody who's probably under the age of 22 at this, at this place, gathered in this one place. And everybody is just swaying and crying and being vulnerable. And it was just so powerful to me um, to see like, you know, I just wish I could have taken a picture and sent it to everybody who says like, this generation is, is, you know, entitled or lazy or anything or not capable of doing great things and say, look at this. We raised $13 million um, for pediatric cancer research, but it, the number or the experience that we had transcends the number amount that we raised. Um, it was just an incredible, incredible, incredible experience for me um, to just be with people my age um, and doing something incredibly positive. Um, and everybody in that arena, I feel like had the same kind of thought process as I did. My generation is awesome. It's simply because we have passions. Passions we have are various, but at the same time, our passions allow us to become part of a community or even several depending on how many passions we have. Ultimately, our passions are ignited and fueled by the people who support them. Once we learn that, nothing is going to stop us at reaching our goals. We will always be able to follow our hearts and continue to explore our passions in life. We have the strength and skills we need to continue this fight for our passions as well as for future generations' passions. We can make a difference. Um, kids need to be more uh, confident in what they think, and they also need to be more need to be less um, hard on themselves. I guess you can say so. Uh, like, don't hold back. If you have a, a if you have a great idea in your head and you're bottling it up and keeping it inside because you're worried about others' opinions, don't. In this high technological world. People forget the simple things. The simple things of just being nice. When you're nice to someone, they're nice in return. And it gets passed on, and passed on, and passed on. A wise woman once told me that all you have to do is smile. Then smiling will cure everything. And it was the best advice I've ever received. And it's so true. Positive attitudes and a smile really do help you through life, and they're contagious. When people tell you you can't do something, just smile and prove them otherwise. People say all the time you can't change the world. It's either you're too young, you're uneducated, you don't know what's really going on, you can't do anything about it. That's so not the case. Because what those people don't understand is changing the world is as easy as being nice to a single person. Hi, my name is Emily Young. I graduated Pleasant Valley in 2010 and I'm now a senior, about to graduate in a week. Uh, at Arcadia University. Um, I majored in English with a minor in sociology. So when I graduated from high school, um, I had no idea what I was going to do, where I was going to go, what I was going to study. Um, I was pretty directionless um, and I think my parents were a little freaked out by that and you know as was I. Um, but since I've been in college, I 
have found my way. Um, it hasn't been one way, you know. Um, I've taken a lot of different um, paths, and I think that's fine. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about the projects I've been doing. Uh, last semester, I worked at a place called Treehouse Books in um, North Philly, and it's a part used bookstore, part after school literacy program, and I interned there in the bookstore section. Um, and it was really great to see people come in from out in the street. Um, it was a pretty impoverished area in the city. Um, people who seemed like they didn't have much of anything, but they still wanted a book to read, you know, and they wanted to further their education or their child's education. Um, and, and how it worked with the store is that they got the books for free. Um, they could make a donation if they could, but if not, they could just take it. And I thought that was really great. Um, so I really liked working there for that purpose. Um, so this semester, I'm working at the Philadelphia Zoo as a conservation and education intern. And I also love that. Um, I get to be around animals, which are one of my main passions, um, and, and help educate the public about them and conservation issues, um, which I think are very important. Um, so yeah, that's the work I'm doing now, and I'm really excited about it. And in the future, um, I'll actually, in August, start working with City Year, um, a national program devoted to uh, keeping students on track to graduation. So I'll be working in inner city Philadelphia middle schools and high schools and working one-on-one -on -one with students who are struggling and want help succeeding. Because um, it's not always easy. Um, but I think everybody, you know, deserves help and an opportunity to be the best they can be, the best student they can be, uh, the best conservationist, you know, uh, anything, anything they want to be. Um, I, I sort of made the decision when I graduated high school and throughout college that I want to be the person to help people. I want to help people. I want to help animals. I want to help uh, anyone I can do anything they want to do. Uh, so I, I, I figured out that that's sort of my calling, I think. Um, so yeah, I think our, our generation has a lot of, lot of potential. Uh, I've seen my friends do amazing things that, that have inspired me uh, to do the things that I'm doing. So um, I'm really excited about, about the future, and I have a lot of faith in this, um, in this new generation's ability to to change the world. For kids my age, I think there has to be a degree of intentionality in their life. So um, before I started doing what I was doing or am doing, um, I intentionally made a decision to change the world, like said it out loud. Um, I'm going to change the world. And um, that's like a big step for people to do. Speak it out loud means like it's real. You speak it into the world. You speak it into existence. Um, it's no longer a thought. You can't push it to the back of your mind. You've made a conscious decision to change the world. What that means for me is um, taking a personal situation and positively spinning that to impact people so that they can learn um, from my situation and then not have to go through it. Um, once my, when my mom passed away in the summer of 2012, a week before I left for college, my freshman year, um, I did not have any idea what I wanted to do when I left for school. I was in an incredible emotional whirlwind between um, leaving my family, leaving uh, my home, and going into an, a completely new environment. Um, and on top of that, I didn't have a direction. I came into school undeclared. Um, but the spring semester of my, of my freshman year, um, this thing called the Lucy Fund, uh, which was kind of falling into the depths of fire or something, like it just wasn't going to exist anymore, um, kind of fell into my lap. And since then, I've decided to make that my passion. Um, and so we have started creating events on college campuses that um, 
or part they're called party for lifes um and these events are aimed to educate uh college people about metastatic cancer and get them involved so i found out that um a lot of college students are really eager to back causes you know we have a lot of energy we have more time than people think we do um to back causes but a lot of times students aren't given causes to back um so i have solicited a lot of people on my college campus to help me and to get involved with what I'm trying to do. And the response has been unparalleled. I could not have asked for a better turnout a few weeks at my school's first ever Party for Life. Um, so that's really cool. But in terms of a larger picture, um, what I've learned through this whole process is like I said earlier, you have to be intentional. You have to want to change the world. And we all have a capacity to change the world in some way, shape or form. Some of us are just scared to spread our proverbial light and, um, and allow it to reach a height that we can't prepare for. Um, and while it is scary and while you may fall short of your original goal, um, the path and journey that you take to change the world, um, will inevitably change it in some way, shape or form. And I think My name is Lauren Heckelman, and one day I hope to change the world. I am currently a sophomore student at Duke University in Durham, North Carolina, where I am studying to be a biomedical engineer. Within this broad field, I plan to focus in biomechanics and ultimately in designing a new line of prosthetic limbs. These prosthetics will be used by patients who have either suffered serious physical injuries or were born with genetic abnormalities or diseases that have left them without the function of at least one of their four limbs. These devices are vital in allowing these patients to regain a sense of independence and self-worth, which is something that many of them lack in the early stages after an amputation. This is the way I plan to help make the world a better place one patient at a time. Hi, my name is Matthew Thompson. I'm 23 years old and I'm a hairstylist in Philadelphia. I decided to become a hairstylist because I realized I wanted a career that I felt fulfilled. And when I thought about what careers I wanted, I wanted a career where I was able to help people that have fun at the same time. So my mind ended up wandering into cosmetology and I researched it a bit, asked different cosmetologists that I know, and I realized that it was the field for me. There's nothing quite like having someone come and sit in my chair and tell me that they're unhappy with the way that their hair looks and then allowing me to change their hair and then having them feel so much better about themselves. I also aim to be a person with open ears to just listen to people when they come in. Try to make the world a better place, at least my own little area, by making people feel special and letting them know that, you know, they matter. So, I would like to leave you with a quote. It is, do not raise your children the way parents raised you. They were born for a different time. And that is by Ali bin Abi Talib. And that quote, really spoke to me because our generations are ever-changing and I think each young generation that grows up, the older generations say, oh this generation is ruining everything or they're not respectful, but I honestly think that that has been said about each young generation. So we're just learning. Some of us, I think, are learning a little faster than others, but hopefully we all get to the point where we know and respect what we've been given and what we have earned. So thank you. Our generation is awesome because we are the first to truly start acknowledging and appreciating people for who they are. 
For many in our generation, it is no longer cool to be ignorant or prejudiced. In fact, it is unacceptable to many. I can speak specifically about the feminist movement and how this generation has sought to acknowledge and rectify the shortcomings of waves before us. In the third wave, we focus on inclusion, intersectionality, and a movement for all. We see that past waves have been racist, homophobic, transphobic, classics, etc., and we seek to end all of those problems in the movement. Our generation accepts and celebrates others for their diversity. That is what makes us unique. So my advice to anybody who who is my age or younger, or you know, it doesn't even matter because nobody's really ever old like outlives the opportunity to change the world um make the conscious decision i'm challenging anyone who watches this video to to change the world like we all have the the ability and capacity to do it but you have to make the decision first and once you do it's kind of crazy how stuff just starts falling into place you get a random email from somebody that opens up a door that you walk through that you meet somebody else that gives you another door to walk through um, the journey that I'm on right now is absolutely incredible. It's unexplainable. I can't, I can't even fathom the fact that all this stuff just keeps, you know, falling into my lap. It's almost like, you know, some divine intervention type thing, or maybe my mom's helping me out, you know. Um, but it all started with the conscious decision, me saying to myself, I am going to change the world. People like these are making this world a better place every day by being authentic and by being loved. And these stories are the ones that we would like Ian to find if he ever begins to question himself or his world. Awareness leads to action. So for Ian's sake and for the sake of his friends, take a few minutes and remember how awesome you are. Once you figure out what makes you awesome, embrace plan B and help others do the same. If you know anyone who has ever struggled with being different or challenged in any way, be encouraging, leave a comment, and send them this video. You can also visit www.planbethechange.com to sign up for our monthly newsletter and to find out how you can contribute to our next project. Or you can visit some of the amazing projects and websites that inspired this video. Okay, when you're done chewing, you gotta look up and smile and say, Hello world, my name is Ian. Hello, my name is Ian. <laughs> say, I'm Ian. I'm Ian. Say, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now say, be awesome. Be awesome. Say, be yourself. Be, you, be myself. <laughs> be yourself. Be myself. Be yourself. Myself. Say, I love you. I like you. Bye. Oop. My clockers.